December 27th, 2016, and Obama has less than 30 days left in the White House. Can we get a yay and an amen for that? But I'm making this video because I'm trying to see if you guys are paying attention to him out here being slimy toward Israel. Um, Israel is the apple of God's eye. If you want to, you know, start some beef with the Lord and get God mad, go for Israel. And that seemed like that's exactly what Obama's try to, trying to do before he exits. You know, he really taking it there. You know, he really, really taking it there. That's one thing um, that God said he was going to bring judgment day for because they trying to divide his land. That So basically, while Obama doing all of this, you ain't doing nothing but Russian judgment day. That's all you doing. I've been like, you know, Lord, is this it? You know, is this all of him? Is this, you know, is this, is it Trump? I know Trump is going to have a fight on his hands trying to correct a lot of things or turn things the way they're supposed to go concerning the word of God. You know, I but, just feel like Obama's not finished. I just, that, I just feel that, that feeling in my spirit. So I've been praying about it and, and God showed me two dreams. Um, both of the dreams have pretty much the same meaning that Obama will lead a civil war, civil unrest here in America. He would be the person that we're warring against. And uh, The first dream, dream one, was uh, Biden was in his sick bed. He was on a bed, I just knew it was a sick bed. <laughs> and uh, Obama, though, was kneeling down beside him and telling him, you know, getting close to his face and telling him, I'll take care of things. So, uh, and, but he seemed happy, Obama. He seemed happy about it. You know, he, there wasn't this, he wasn't like, oh, I'm sorry, you're sick. It was like he was kind of joyful with Biden. So I don't know what to make of that. So again, I had this dream on May 10th and that was on Mother's Day. I dreamt that I was at some sort of public gathering. Obama was giving a speech and he mentioned, if you want to vote for Trump, that's fine. There were people confused that, you know, he said that. And there were people unsure if they wanted to publicly support Trump. It was a weird moment when this was said. Then so I it was very interesting that the Lord gave me this dream this morning because I really just haven't been following the news. Well, the dream that I had was it was um, me watching TV. It was like I was watching news. And I remember hearing them speak about Trump and something in regards to votes and something in regards to Obama. I will have to say when I woke up from this, it, my heart was really racing. This was so intense. The feelings, the emotion um, of what I experienced, it just felt so real. It started out where I was in this house and I just remember one of my cousins just came through the house and he said, did you hear, um, did you hear the statement that Obama made? And I was like, no, what are you talking about? And he said, Obama just made an announcement that the signs in the heavens are about to begin. And then I see these two horse, there were two horse that were just going at it with each other. And it was just, it was so intense. Like as I was looking at this through the window, I couldn't take my eyes off of it. But at the same time, I could feel fear. I felt fear. And... I'm watching this and the horses, they were just, it was just so much anger and chaos and violence. I mean, they was just going at it. Like they, 
they couldn't I don't know how to explain it but it was so intense in the dream I saw Obama on the phone in his office and he was talking to the leader of some other country and they were plotting something against the United States and then I saw a city and I saw Obama's face and I saw a bomb uh, like a bomb got dropped on a city and it was at night and then I saw warplanes flying and once again I'm in a war room and Obama's in there and he's giving these dates and they're and he's being read he has like experts with them on uh, some statements he'd made because the whole world was looking to him asking him if he was declaring war or not if if he would officially declare this as a war now I don't know what area or region it was I don't add or take away from my dreams he was being grilled by people that had to put a press release out they're saying look you know is it war and and uh, because they, and he's saying no he said I meant warfare and they read two statements he'd made on two different occasions and they were saying Mr. President you're not going to be able to get out of this and they're reading him the exact verbiage of what he'd said he said I know what I meant I meant warfare not war and then uh, last night, which would have been mon uh, Monday night into Tuesday morning, I had a dream of this countdown. And I kept hearing this countdown. It was like 10, 9, 8, 7. And then it went 3. This is my dream. 3, 7, 3, 7, 3, 7. An angel has showed up in my dream and showed me that 3, 7 meant war. Go find that on my playlist. An angel shows me the numbers 3, 7 and, uh, and says it means war. And I've stood by that dream since it was first made several months ago. But uh, I do believe uh, something big is going to happen soon because of this number 37 I keep seeing. It, and I looked it up and it means the sword. But uh, I keep seeing that multiple times every day. Hey everyone, it's Byron here to testify for Jesus Christ. Had a dream this morning. Today is uh, February the 11th, 2018. I uh, had a dream. In this dream, I was in a workplace and there was some 20, 30 people that worked in a workplace. I also worked there and Obama was like the head of the workplace. Um, at least I can say he was back in power somehow. And most people were going about their daily business except for me I was preparing to go to war and I had a uniform on and getting my, my bags and all ready Obama walked up to me with some cold eyes and said good luck out there uh, I got the feeling he was the instigator or he's the one that started the war and I was going to fight in it um, and shortly thereafter I woke up uh, I wake I was awake and I was thinking about that dream um, I had my eyes closed there laying in the bed but one other thing happened I had a vision I saw a, in the vision I saw um, a calendar like a desk calendar one page you know you every day you gotta flip it uh, January 22nd I don't know if that is related to the dream or not that's just the what I saw and uh, yeah, it looked just, like Obama was um it looked like he was getting off a plane or something. He was getting off something, but he was coming. He was shaking the military people's hands, or he was shaking people's hands. He was smiling and all that. But he got on the speaker and he had said, um, "I didn't see him on the speaker, but I heard his voice on the on the speaker." And he said, "I'm sorry, it has to be this way, but we have to go to war." The other day on April 27, 2014, I had a very short dream. In the dream, I saw Obama giving a speech about war. He said something like, war is coming, or we are at war. I can't exactly remember. November the 18th, I had a dream that President Obama was giving a, a speech to the nation. And he looked like he was reflecting. And he seemed like, like sorry. He was like... Uh, in a state of of reflection 
and he kept quiet uh, in front of the microphone, and then he said, it's time. And then there, there was a there, there, there was a nuclear attack in the United States, and there was a nuclear attack in in um, Mexico too at the same time. I I don't know why Mexico comes into into this nuclear attack too. Uh, and it was President Obama with his entire. Uh, war cabinet, I guess you would say, the top brass, top military brass. And they were all sitting around, um, the brass, the military brass was sitting around this table uh, discussing very uh, uh, intensely what they should do about the situation that was going on in the world. And they weren't discussing it with Obama. Uh, Obama was just at the end of the table, hanging out, essentially, watching everything take place. And they're, uh, they're just, the brass is, is talking back and forth, saying, what should we do? This is serious. Um, when all of a sudden, oh, and there's this big red button, uh, at the end of the table. And all of a sudden, without consulting anybody, without saying a single word, Obama slams the red button down, right? And, uh, <laughs> the, uh, military brass all look at him and say, what the hell have you done? You've doomed us all. This is literally what they said. And they tried to, um, send their agents of the Secret Service to go take Obama out, uh, to go, you know, tackle him. And Obama then, uh turned, transformed into, I mean, essentially the Terminator. His eyes turned red. They tried to take him down, but they found out that underneath he was made out of steel. I saw Barack Obama, Hussein, in my dream. Um, what happened is, I was at a, like a warehouse, and I saw Obama, he got off of his airplane, and then he came into that warehouse that belonged to the greenhouse, and, um, the InfoWars reporter was asking him questions, and the InfoWars reporter asked him um, about Denver, and he kept asking him a question about Denver. I kept hearing the word Denver, Denver, and um, I don't know what, why was he asking him that, and I didn't hear the complete question, but I heard the word Denver, and I overheard a voice telling Obama, don't answer the question. I want to do this video about Obama. It's going to be called Rise Out of Chaos because that's what Obama reminds me of. Is he's going to rise out of chaos. And one of the dreams was I saw him around this large table and it looked like at the United Nations, like a building like that. It was that type of building. And um, it was like a committee. He, he was in charge. When I, when I, I was there, him. I saw the Lord telling me, to pray. Trump was not, he, he was not there. I don't know where he was, but I, I found myself there and I was asking myself, wow, what am I doing here? What if Trump comes back? Where is he, President Trump? What if he comes back? But the Lord told me, the message I'm giving you is that I want you to tell the Church of America to pray. The Lord told me, pray for President Trump. Pray for him and pray for the next coming elections. I am coming here to tell the intercessors to pray around the world. For America, it's not only about America because America determines a lot of things that happen around the world. So every intercessor, wherever you are, I'm calling you to pray and intercede uh, for President Trump. Pray for the nation of America. And the Lord told me, if the church in America does not pray, this nation will not end well this election will be so different it will be so different and i saw i saw the lord telling me how president trump is so stressed up right now he is so stressed up it is only that he cannot share and the lord was saying you need to stand with him you need to pray for him you need to pray for his heart you need to arise and pray and call the intercessors to stand with him and uh then uh, in, I, I also had another dream. In that dream, I saw, I saw the, the pre, uh, Obama, you know, Obama, who was uh, the president. I saw him and uh, I saw him coming back to power. And I, and I was asking, how can he come back to power? I saw him coming back to, and I was like, how? And the Lord told me, do not worry, I'll reveal to you. And the Lord said, 
if the church in America does not pray, President Trump, it will be so tough for him in this election. And instead of uh, the Lord showing me Joe Biden, the Lord was showing me Obama will come back to power. September 19th, 2019. Barack Obama transformed himself into Donald Trump. Then had Trump killed. Then Obama ruled from the United Nations. End of dream. All right, so that was phase two of the probable impact of the Red Horseman on America. Uh, for those who haven't seen my other videos, my name is Zach Mason. I'm an author, and I wrote a book called Revelation Unfolding, among others, where I connect current events with prophecy in the Bible and to show how things are lining up. About a year ago, I became aware for the first time of all these dreams and visions that were out there Christians were having about end times events. And in fact, the dreams are always on a certain number of themes. They're not random. They're not just about, you can't find a dream on just any topic or subjects or, or detail that you want. Now, I found they were on specific themes and that hundreds, if not thousands of Christians uh, have been reporting these dreams uh, on YouTube and other places. So a year ago, when I first uh, became aware of these and was, was surveying a lot of these dreams, I pretty quickly discovered phase one, which you may have already seen that video, which is a period of strong civil unrest, anarchy. Uh, I detailed that in the video called phase one. I also discovered what I call phases three and four pretty easily, which I'll be doing videos soon about for you. But I had no idea about this theme of Obama commanding an army or leading an army or rising or coming back into power until I myself had a dream. One night I had a, a, a very long detailed dream and when I woke up, I couldn't remember anything about it except for that Obama was leading an army. And that's all I remembered. And, and that prompted me to go search and uh, see if other Christians had seen something about that. And boom, all of a sudden, I found all of these dreams out there about the topic. Now, I want to say with this particular subject of Obama coming back into power and leading an army, who he's leading the army against exactly is not as certain. I think it seems like it could be Trump, and that is the most likely scenario. But that is not nearly as certain uh, as the fact that Obama would come back into power. Let me explain why. There are uh, just a few dreams on Trump being involved, but Obama, uh, there are hundreds. The, the body of dreams on is big on this topic out there. And Christians have been seeing these things uh, about Obama for eight years. Now, actually nine years at this point. So that's important to note because when they started nine years ago, Obama was still president. Okay, He was beginning his second term. And yet many Christians were dreaming about this and they're surprised. They're saying, well, he's president, but in my dream, somehow... He wasn't president, and then he became president again, or he became a leader again and came back to power. So that would that's unusual that people would dream that, that specifically, while he's still president. Okay, Then, after he was no longer president, these dreams continued. And Christians uh, be, kept seeing this, of him coming back to power. But now he's not president. Trump's president. You know, I lived through that time. Trump was the focus of the news every day. Nobody was talking about Obama. Obama was not on people's minds, and yet people continued to have these dreams. That's significant. So, that said, this isn't about politics. This is a very important point. This is not about politics. And as much as I stand against socialism, it's not really even about that. Because if the United States becomes socialist, it's punishment, it's judgment for our sin as a nation. But here's a very important takeaway. The United States is made up of the red, the white, and the blue. 
the red being Republicans, the blue being Democrats, and the white being those Christians that are pursuing righteousness instead of politics. Yes, you heard me right. Decades ago, the government infected the church with this black seed of an idea that the nation could be redeemed through politics. And certainly, you know, I was among them. I've been a passionate conservative. Why? Because I'm pro-life and I believe in protecting children and babies. I also am a free market in my mindset. I believe that represents uh, God's will through the Ten Commandments. And I believe in people's innate human rights that he's given them, the, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I have not abandoned those principles. I believe those are and were inspired by God. But our politicians and our laws and our government's policies reflect the heart of the people, and you cannot change them at the top level. It has to come from the people. When the people are changed, the laws will change and the politicians will change. It's that simple. We as the church have spent too far, too long on politics. And it's worthless. Focus on the people. Focus on your neighbor. Work to expand the kingdom of God. Work to expand your own righteousness. Put on the white robes of righteousness that Christ would have you wear. Pursue him, increase your obedience, and help your neighbors, friends, and family. Pursue God better. Get off the bench. Stop being lukewarm. Increase their righteousness. The answer, if what we've seen in these dreams breaks out, if there is a civil war with Obama leading an army on one side and Trump or somebody else leading an army on the other side, Christians should not join. It's not our fight. Yes, it's our country. But all who live by the sword, as Jesus said, will die by the sword. And your life will have been wasted. For you're fighting for something that is doomed. That God has decreed is time has ended. There is a new kingdom coming. A millennial kingdom to be ruled by Jesus. The time of the United States appears to be at an end. We had a good run. We did great things for God. And we can be proud of that. But we should not be fighting for a lost cause. Yes, defend your neighbor. Yes, defend your family. Yes, defend the innocent. If you, if you have the ability to save somebody's life, do it. But politics won't solve it. And if whatever side would win such a civil war, it isn't going to change anything if the people's hearts are still far from God. So let's pursue him well together, brothers and sisters. Let's wake up. Wake up. Your, your friends, wake up your family. Encourage them. Set them on fire for God in a figurative way, please. Help them reignite their passion and their love for him. Get them into fellowship. Encourage them to get back into church. They can't be on fire alone. They have to be in fellowship at a local church. We have to be in the word and we have to spend time seeking our Father in prayer. Will you join me in doing this? And the thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of other Christians that are waking up right now.